Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Fabulous. It's Friday, June the 16th. How in the world did it happen? We are over halfway through the month already. Right. It's and crazy. It is crazy. Uh, there was some big news this week in the, in the financial world, and I try to reach out about once a month and talk to a guy by the name of Jordan Goodman, America's Money Answers Man. Because he has way better answers than I have. My answer is usually, duh, I don't know. So uh, we're going to talk to him about what the Fed did this week, uh, see if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But we'll be chatting with him later in the show. Also, I got a quote for you today, Heidi. Okay. Nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity. That is true. H. Jackson Brown Jr. There you go. I wonder what the opportunity was that, that H. Jackson Brown Jr. missed out on. I have no idea. <laughs> but I've missed out on pretty good opportunities where it was something I was going to do and I'm like, eh, I'm not going to do it. And then later you're like, oh man, if I had done that, wow, that would have been great. I've also had some great opportunities. Like this one opportunity where I asked this young lady to marry me and she said, yes, here she is, Heidi. Oh, <laughs> that was a good opportunity. I'm glad I didn't miss that one. Coming up, we got some special things going on today. We'll tell you about that in a bit. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? Oh, you never ask. It's Friday, June the 16th. Today is National Flip-Flop Day. I do not wear flip-flops very often. Every once in a while I do. But this, I just don't like them as much. I don't like yeah. that thing jammed between my toes. You got me some really nice comfy shoes that I wear. What are those things? Snooks. Those things. And then I got Crocs. I love them. I got Crocs that I wear. Crocs are awful. She does not. You're like. not allowed to wear Crocs. <laughs> Either way, it's National Flip-Flop Day <laughs> today. Ugliest Dog Day today as well. We used to have an ugly we dog. We had one of those. Yeah. But he was so ugly, he was adorable. Uh, was a Chinese crested hairless. He had no hair other than the <laughs> top of his head. Work at home Father's Day today. Uh, we've got the real like Father's Day, Father's Day this weekend, but work at home Father's Day is today. Bloom's Day today. Fudge Day today. Ladies Day today. So a lot of stuff to celebrate. Celebrate Ladies Day and Ugly Dog Day. Find uh, an ugly dog that you can celebrate with and a beautiful lady and that balances it all out. So it's all good then. So hmm. see, that's, that's a good plan on Flip Flop Day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. I love watching TV shows and movies, but I hated seeing my monthly bill get higher and higher. All that money every month just to watch TV. Well, not anymore. We cut our cable. We were paying 185 bucks a month for channels we didn't even watch. Now we pay for just the internet and we save about 150 bucks a month. And we still get to watch what we want, when we want, with no monthly fee. Learn how you can do this too at ChannelSurferTV.com. Watch the video there to learn how to watch movies and TV with no monthly fee. Do it today and save 50% at ChannelSurferTV.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. You ready for this, Heidi? I'm ready. Pigeon gambling. What? What? That just sounds ridiculous. But this is what a scientist at the University of Kentucky is saying in a recent study, which showed that like people, some pigeons will take risks to win prizes. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine what kind what's of going prizes. On. I don't know. Let's take a listen to the rest of this because right now it sounds a little loony. Uh, researchers found that pigeons, when given the choice to peck a light that would give them three food pellets each time, almost universally preferred a light that would give them a payout of 10 pellets 20% of the time. So saying, if I peck on this one, it gives me one every single time. Over here, it doesn't give me one, but it'll give me 10 pellets 20% of the time. Hmm. Averaged out, that meant pigeons were choosing to get two pellets per peck instead of three. The reason could be that pigeons are motivated by a surprising change from their expectations. The same phenomenon could explain why human gamblers ignore their losses and focus on their rarer but more surprising wins. So, do, does that make sense to you? That they peck and nothing happens, and then all of a sudden they get you know a whole bunch of pellets dump out, 10 of them. Yeah. Or every time they peck, they get a pellet. So if you were that pigeon, which one would you do? I would use the one where I get more every once in a while. Because they still get two every peck. They get two instead of three. But sometimes they get way more. Hmm. So I would take the one less pellet and just... Three food pellets each time. Or two each or... time. No, because it says three food pellets each time or... 10 food pellets 20% of the time. So you actually get more by doing three pellets each time. Oh, I, I misunderstood. Yeah, I thought so these, it was two each time, and then these, once in a while a whole bunch would come out. These silly pigeons just don't understand. 
So, no, I I don't know. I guess uh, there we go. Good to know that we're not the only Who critters. Who time to mess I around do. with pigeons? So, here's the thing that's funny. Somebody wrote a grant for that saying, here's what we'd like to study. <laughs> uh, we'd like to get a, a funding, uh, some funding to study this. It's uh, the gambling habits of pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody else on the other end said, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> I still need to set my own research firm up because I got to get on this dumb money. I mean, there's a lot of it. Anyway, you know, it's true because you heard it on the radio. John and Heidi. Each day at this time, we talk about people doing dumb things under the influence, but addiction is no laughing matter. If you or someone you know needs help, there's a toll-free number you can call. 1-800-438-0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline. 1-800-438-0380. And this is your brain on drugs. Right when you thought that, you know, we're not going to talk about school anymore because school is done. Well, we're going to talk about school today. You know why, Heidi? Why? The final day of school rolled around in Marlin, Texas, and that was the same day that their sixth grade teacher was arrested and charged with possession of meth. Yeah, sixth grade teacher. At least, according to the story, it doesn't say that she was, like, dealing drugs to students. That would be even worse. But you would not expect a sixth grade teacher to be the one charged with possession of meth, would you? No. I wouldn't expect that. Then again, uh, wasn't Breaking Bad? Wasn't he a teacher? I was thinking he was a science teacher. I don't know. Our son would know. He watched that show. I, I'd yeah, he was a chemistry it. teacher. That's what I was going to say. I was thinking he was. So I wonder if this uh, sixth grade teacher was a chemistry teacher in Marlin, Texas. It doesn't say in the story, but coming up here in a bit, we're going we're gonna to find out about our moment of duh. That is on the way. We've got your scoop of the day. And then later in the program, we'll be visiting with Jordan Goodman, uh, America's Money Answers Man. He's got some answers for us about the what the Fed has done this week. You know, see if that's good or bad. That's all on the way. John and Heidi. Now your moment of duh. In this case, F is for felony. University of Central Florida student is facing felony charges after hacking into the school system to change his F to a B. University police say an engineering professor became suspicious when he got an email from the school's electronic grade book thanking him for approving an email from his grade roster several hours earlier, actually prompting his grades and I'm sorry, actually approving his grades and getting the same email. So he was thinking, wait a minute, why am I getting this again? He reviewed the grades and caught 22 year old Sammy Adele Amir's change. He changed his F to a B. Amir eventually turned himself in, faces felony charges of accessing a computer without authority. Here's the thing, dude. If you are smart enough to be able to do that. Yeah, go get a ap- job. Apply yourself <laughs> a little bit, 22-year-old I just Sammy, don't get it. And you wouldn't have an F. You would have probably got an A. But instead, you changed your F to a B, and you got yourself in a whole lot of trouble. So that's a bad, bad, bad idea. If you have the ability to go in and change your grades, you are smart enough to pass and you just need to apply yourself coming up we've got your scoop of the day that's on the way John and Heidi. if you promised yourself you'd lose weight before you went to the beach that's still within reach get some help from a cool pink drink try it free at pinkdrinkfree.com this pink drink tastes great and can help you lose weight eight out of ten americans are overweight if you're tired of being one of them we'd love to help People around the country are experiencing amazing results with this pink drink. And you can try it before you buy it at pinkdrinkfree.com. That's pinkdrinkfree.com. John and Heidi. Now your scoop of the day. A poll has come out gauging public interest in likely future technology advancements. What do you think we're interested in, Heidi? It says, we're generally against the idea of changing DNA of kids in the womb. So... People are generally against saying, I want a boy or I want a girl, and you can make this, you know, once you've got the baby growing, you can change it. Yeah. Most people, yeah, generally against that. We we don't seem all that concerned about self driving cars. So there's some people that are going, these are bad. There's some people going, oh, these are good. But for the most part, it seems like most people are. I'm concerned about, I think that's a bad idea too. Okay. Uh, We're obviously worried about potential sci fi movie scenarios because 65% of us are against using robots to care for the sick and elderly. Agreed. And 63% of us are against the use of drones in any way. So they're saying, no drones for me. Thank you, anywho. Agreed. So there you go. That is a technology poll that came out to find out are we ready for the future now that it's here? So I just think that. I think we need to be careful how much we depend on technology. Well, and I, and I think that technology has kind of gotten out of control, and especially with the caring for the elderly yeah. part. Yeah. There's no, 
emotion there. And I th- don't you think well, that our elderly a, deserve yeah, absolutely. But I bet somebody can, with a, a human yeah. touch and caring? I bet and, they could build a robot with emotion, though. <laughs> they, could, they could program it in. Yeah. I'm just saying. If that's the only downfall, don't, don't say that because they'll come up with a way to put that in there. Hey, a recent study by the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University confirmed the positive impact of teens sharing meals with mama and papa. Study tracked teenagers who ate dinner with their family two or fewer nights per week compared to those who had dinner with the family at least five times a week. Those teens who one uh, those teens rather were one and a half times as likely to drink alcohol, two and a half times as likely to smoke cigarettes, and nearly three times as likely to try marijuana if they're not having family meals more than a couple of times a week. So it's important. I know our kids don't oh, always like it, but we we have dinner together almost every night. Every yeah. once in a while, there's a time where something's going on. But No, it's important to me that we have dinner with the kids because and they're not going to be around very long. So when I, you were a kid, was it dinner or was it supper? It was both. W- when, I don't know. when is dinner for you? Dinner's dinner is supper. And then when is supper? Because Dinner is supper. They're the okay, same, same thing. Me. They're interchangeable. We call we them, them both. Missing a meal as a kid. We had lunch. <laughs> we had dinner. We had supper. So maybe we just eat too much. I don't know. You had lunch. You had dinner and supper. When did I'm you have just, dinner? We just had lunch and supper. We never had dinner. <laughs> so that's the thing. I, that's where I was wondering where this dinner goes. Do I get another meal? <laughs> no. The same one? There's not an extra Dang, meal. I thought I've been missed getting nothing. ripped off all these years. <laughs> hey, for those of you who are big fans of uh, kids, uh, movies, and singing, and Disney, you're in luck. Disney Pixar film Coco is going to be out in November, and a bonus 21 minute feature, 21 minute featurette. Is, is going to be with it. It's called Olaf's Frozen Adventure. It follows Olaf on a journey to learn about the holiday traditions in the land. Uh, Pixar released the trailer this week for Olaf's Frozen Adventure. It came out Tuesday. I've got a link to that video. Uh, our kids are old enough that they're not into that kind of thing, so we dodge the bullet on that one, Heidi. We don't have to go to that. <laughs> Although our daughter, once in a while, she's in a mood to watch little kid movies, and I'm like... Oh. Here lately she has I know. been. I'm not sure what's, like, Why are we watching what's up with that. I don't know. Just kind of... Pining for her childhood as she's turning 16 this month. I think that's what it is. A Russian man who caught his wife chatting online with another man decided to log her off permanently using an axe on her laptop. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah, she will not be chatting with that other man ever again. A newly published study from Harvard College says college students who don't go to bed or wake up at consistent times every day are more likely to have lower grades. So they're saying if you want to have better grades, you need to be going to bed at a reasonable time. And finally, I've always uh, considered myself more of a Google guy, and you've considered yourself what, Heidi? Yahoo. Yeah, more of a Yahoo girl. Well, Yahoo is out of business. Did you know this? No. Yahoo is no longer a company. Tuesday of this week, Verizon took ownership of the company and the brand. Yahoo's search site, email, and news and sports sites will still be on the web like they always have been, but now they're all part of Verizon. So there you go. Why so, do we, why do we have to have so many giant companies? Why can't we just have a couple of smaller ones that all work together? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's the way it works. Hey, this is the age in which we live, Heidi. Coming your way, we're going to talk about a man who knows all kinds of cool stuff. Going to be visiting with Jordan Goodman, America's Money Answers Man. Going to talk about what happened at the Fed this week, and that is on the way. John and Heidi. How long has it been since you've been on vacation? Way too long. Well, we're going to Punta Cana this November for a cool event called 80s in the Sand. I'm so looking forward to just being able to relax during the day. All day, every day for seven full days. And, as a bonus, get to hear some awesome music at night. You can also meet some 80s icons like Anthony Michael Hall, Andrew McCarthy, and many more. Get all the details at 80sinthesand.com. Use promo code RADIO to get a $200 immediate refund per person. That website again is 80sinthesand.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. We've got a special guest joining us right now. About once a month, we reach out and we talk to Jordan Goodman, America's Money Answers Man. And we always get to uh, stay up to date on what's going on in the financial world. And Jordan, this was kind of a big week, wasn't it? Well, it was. Uh, The Federal Reserve uh, raised interest rates by a quarter point. Uh, They did it back in March. They did it back in December. And I think, John, they're actually going to raise it again maybe September or December. We'll have to see how things go. Uh, this is what the Federal Reserve calls normalizing interest rates. They want to get them back to kind of nor- normal levels of maybe 2 to 3%. Uh, they've had them at these incredibly low levels for a very, very long time, since December 2008, um, you know, nine years basically. Um, and uh, 
So it has implications for both borrowers and savers. I thought we could discuss that. Does it affect somebody borrowing money more or somebody saving money more or a little bit of both? It affects the borrowers much more than the savers. So uh, when the Federal Reserve raises its rate, uh, the so-called Fed funds rate, from one to one and a quarter, which they've just done, then that means that uh, anything, the prime rate goes up from four to four and a quarter, and anything tied to the prime is going to go up as well. So you have, for example, student loans, car loans, credit card loans, small business loans, all those kind of things are typically tied to the prime rate. So those just went up by a quarter point. So it's going to cost people more uh, to borrow in various ways. But what it's not affecting is what you earn from the banks. So they're still paying pretty much zero on CDs, savings accounts, money market funds, that kind of thing, because the banks don't feel any pressure to raise interest rates on what they're paying. They can get away with it, so they will, (laughs) is what it comes down to. So the bank's profit margins are widening in that they charge more, but they don't pay more. So the bank stocks have done very well. But for the consumer, it's kind of unfair to be paying more but not earning more. That doesn't seem right. So the, the bank gets to say, hey, we're going we're gonna to charge you more interest because we can, but we're not going to pay you any more interest because we don't have to. Exactly. You've got it right. You'd be a good banker, John, actually. <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, that doesn't seem very fair. Are there places that you could go right now to, if, if you are a person that's, that's maybe saying, hey, I want to make investments that actually make some interest, I'm, I'm assuming there's got to be something better out there than zero, right? Absolutely. So one of my favorite places are what are called commercial real estate income funds. And there is a website for that, commercialrealestateincomefunds.com. And they've got a phone number too, 888-444. 2102. That's a way of earning 8% very safely. Uh, minimum hold time is 18 months. You get monthly checks, and then you can either take them and spend them or reinvest it back into the fund, whatever you like. And you can do it inside an IRA. You can do it outside an IRA. And basically what they're doing is lending money on a short-term basis, like one-year basis, to commercial real estate projects that use it to uh, improve themselves or add a new wing or do a new apartment building or something like that, commercial projects. And uh, when the buildings are sold, you actually get a piece of the profits as well. There's a bit of a profit sharing, which might be another 1% or 2% on top of that. So there's a nice, safe place, John, to earn 8% uh, without having to keep your money in the bank earning zero, basically. And again, if that helps any of your folks, it's commercialrealestateincomefunds.com or 888-444-2102. This is not something you're going to hear about from your local broker because they don't make any commissions on it, so they won't won't tell you about that at all. And that's, you know, it's it's sad because you would hope that they would do what's best for you and your money, but sometimes it seems like some people are doing what's best for, you know, me and my money instead, and, and that's just kind of sad. Well, it is. Now, there's a new rule that just went into effect, which is called the fiduciary rule from the Department of Labor, which says that for retirement accounts, things like 401ks and IRAs, that any kind of financial advice has to be in the client's interest, not in the advisor's interest. And the uh, investment people fought that tooth and nail. (laughs) They didn't want to do that. But it it did go into effect. It may be repealed in the future, but at the moment it's in effect. Uh, Because exactly that, there's a conflict of interest. Because financial advisors tell you what's in their interest, what they're going to earn the biggest fees on, not within your interest. Again, our guest right now, Jordan Goodman, America's Money Answers Man. And I've got the website you were just talking about, and I'll, ha- I'll share that on our social media. And I'll also share your website, but I'll let you tell everybody what that is for the folks listening. So my website is moneyanswers.com, and I've got links of all types, uh, videos. I, I get emails from your people all the time. I'd love to help them. Uh, there's just a lot of good resources out there, John, that most people don't know about. And financial advisors don't particularly want to tell you about them because they don't earn fees from it. Yeah. So uh, th- those are the kind of resources I offer in all kinds of areas, in debt, in investing, in insurance. So that's what I love to do. And, and I encourage people to email me at moneyanswers.com and, and love to help your folks. Well, we appreciate that a bunch. And again, Jordan Goodman, he's the America's Money Answers Man. And I flip through the channels every once in a while, and I'll see Jordan on uh, one of these national talk programs. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that you visit with us here on this program as well. I love to do it. I love to help your folks. Absolutely. 
Again, moneyanswers.com is the website. Jordan Goodman, America's Money Answers Man. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Would you like custom t-shirts for an event or sports team? We understand that usually the budget's not unlimited. We have full color custom printed t-shirts for just $7 each. That's one of the best prices you'll find anywhere. No minimum orders, so you can print just one or print a thousand. The price is just $7 per shirt with a minimal setup fee per design. Make the memories of your next event last forever or help your team look amazing with a little help from CustomShirtInc.com. That's CustomShirtInc.com. John and Heidi. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Sesame Street's Snuffleupagus has a first name. Do you know what his first name is? What is his first name? Aloysius. Oh. Aloysius Snuffleupagus. I think you've told me that before, but I, I forgot it. Just I don't think so. it's not a common name. I don't name. think I ever knew that. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The speed at which Heinz ketchup travels as it leaves the bottle is a blistering 25 miles per <laughs> year. Yeah, that's how slow. I mean, fast. It's pouring out of that bottle. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Billy Crystal paid $239,000 for Mickey Mantle's baseball glove. But here's the thing. You know what? He has the money to do that. Uh, if he's a big fan, I think that's really cool that he Absolutely. spent that. Absolutely. Good his own for him. Money. It's his money. Him, yeah, let him spend it the way he wants. This is a really cool fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The ballpoint pen was the inspiration behind the first roll on deodorant. I did not know that. I learned that today. Huh. And now you all learned that today, too. And our final fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? When it comes to internet shorthand, the meaning uh, of the acronym WIIFM is what's in it for me. Okay. So if you see that pop up somewhere online, that's what that is. It's not some radio station. WIIFM? What? What's that one? No, it's what's in it for me. And all of this comes your way, courtesy of our friends, is at, at pinkdrinkfree.com. Not just another diet. It's a way of life. Pinkdrinkfree.com. John and Heidi. If you promised yourself you'd lose weight before you went to the beach, that's still within reach. Get some help from a cool pink drink. Try it free at pinkdrinkfree.com. This pink drink tastes great and can help you lose weight. Eight out of ten Americans are overweight. If you're tired of being one of them, we'd love to help. People around the country are experiencing amazing results with this pink drink. And you can try it before you buy it at pinkdrinkfree.com. That's pinkdrinkfree.com. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show. We've got Father's Day this weekend. I'm kind of excited for Father's Day because are we having your dad over this week? We are. Yeah. See, my father's been gone since 1995, so we're not celebrating with him. I always say happy Father's Day to him, but uh, we've got Heidi's dad coming over. I have for you right now Father's Day quiz. You ready for this? Yes, I'm ready. It says, your father has an important role in your life that is A, providing the seed that brought you into this world, B, not only being the main breadwinner in the house, but being a symbol of strength and character, or C, taking up space on the couch all weekend to watch sports. Which one of those? I, well, I, all of the above. Okay, so all, all three. <laughs> uh, two, Father's Day is an opportunity for you to show your dad, A, you truly value his role in your upbringing, B, that, you, that even though you may not openly show it, you do love him, or C, that as long as the necktie section at Kmart's not sold out, you've got a Father's Day gift for him in five minutes. Which one of those for you, Heidi? Uh, probably B. B. Even though you may not show it openly, you still love him? Yeah, I mean, you that, show it openly. We don't show it the way, like... Yeah, you do. It's just a different way to show it. We call <laughs> each other names. That's. But he knows what you mean with he all those things. He knows what I mean. <laughs> Three, we, while we celebrate Mother's Day with breakfast in bed for mom, we tend to begin our Father's Day with A, the same thing, breakfast in bed, B, taking dad out for breakfast somewhere else, C, getting, uh, getting him out of bed early so he can mow the lawn before he starts making excuses because it's too hot to mow outside. Which one of those would, would you say? I would say B. We usually go. Yeah, we do. Although out. we're having my dad house, is not right? a breakfast in bed kind no, of guy. I can't even imagine. He that. would be so that weirded would actually out be if kind we. Of fun. We should take breakfast in bed sometime. <laughs> Early, wake up. Here's a waffle. Here's a pancake. Here's syrup all over your pillow. All right, and uh, number four on our Father's Day quiz. Father's Day wouldn't be a true holiday for Dad unless a you tell him you love him and how special he is in your life. B. You take him somewhere nice for dinner. Or C, you let him just sit on the sofa all day and watch sports. Father's Day wouldn't be the same without which one of those? 
I taking don't him know. somewhere nice for dinner? Probably somewhere nice, or yeah. making a nice dinner, or whatever. I think you could also say all three, letting him know how mu- how much you love him and how special he is. But he also, your dad does like to sit and watch sports, which is kind of funny because at our house we we never watch sports, <laughs> so we have him coming over to our place and hey, enjoy no sports today. Coming your way here in a bit, we've got a Swedish couple that they want to name their son Lego. We'll tell you about that in a bit. John and Heidi. I love watching TV shows and movies, but I hated seeing my monthly bill get higher and higher. All that money every month just to watch TV. Well, not anymore. We cut our cable. We were paying 185 bucks a month for channels we didn't even watch. Now we pay for just the internet and we save about 150 bucks a month. And we still get to watch what we want, when we want, with no monthly fee. Learn how you can do this too at ChannelSurferTV.com. Watch the video there to learn how to watch movies and TV with no monthly fee. Do it today and save 50% at ChannelSurferTV.com. After a lengthy legal battle in Sweden, a couple has won the right to name their son Lego. Yeah. Couples in Sweden have previously run into trouble with officials over the name Ikea or Veranda or Metallica and the use of Elvis for a girl. Uh, Swedish Administrative Court of Appeals has now overruled an earlier decision to stop a couple from naming their child Lego after the brightly colored plastic building blocks. So there's a young man in Sweden right now with the name Lego. So do, do you think that's a good name for a child? Well, no, I would never name my child Lego, but whatever. Do you think the other kids are going to be mean to Mr. Lego? Yes. Probably. Yeah. So why would you want to go to all of the trouble to give your child such a unique name so kids can pick on them? I just don't understand that. I personally wouldn't, but... I wouldn't either. And, and the thing is, you know, I I grew up with a kid that had a unique name, and he got picked on. I always felt bad for the guy. Uh, and it's just, it's sad because I don't think mom and dad think that kind of stuff through. So they, according to the story, won, but poor Lego probably didn't. Coming your way, we've got uh, more fun stuff about lip gloss. We're going to tell you all about the dangers of lip gloss this summer, apparently, on the way. One of the good things about being a guy is I don't have to worry about this kind of thing. But it says summer is a time you might want to stay away from shiny lip gloss. Well, I always stay away from shiny (laughs) lip gloss. Dermatologists are saying they can actually increase your risk of developing skin cancer because of the slick, shiny nature of the gloss would allow more of the sun's rays to penetrate directly through the skin instead of getting reflected off of the skin surface. Now, you'd think it'd be the opposite way. You'd think it would reflect away, but apparently not. It says it would become cancerous if left untreated could cause disfigurement in rare cases could spread to other organs and become deadly. So they're saying, you know, if you care about yourself, steer clear of the shiny lip gloss. Apparently I would talk to my dermatologist about that personally, because I'm just reading this study. This comes from somebody online that apparently it makes sense to me because the shine would attract the sun. So yeah, it makes sense think, to me. You'd think it would reflect the sun away instead of absorbing it in. So that's know. a part that confuses me. But then again, I do get confused easily when it comes to things like this because I know nothing. I mean nothing at all about, I don't know, lip gloss or or sun or anything else. Coming up, going to talk about some things you don't learn about in school. It's on the way. How long has it been since you've been on vacation? Way too long. Well, we're going to Punta Cana this November for a cool event called 80s in the Sand. I'm so looking forward to just being able to relax during the day. All day, every day for seven full days. And, as a bonus, get to hear some awesome music at night. You can also meet some 80s icons like Anthony Michael Hall, Andrew McCarthy, and many more. Get all the details at 80sinthesand.com. Use promo code RADIO to get a $200 immediate refund per person. That website again is 80sinthesand.com. All right, there's an email that's floating around on the internet that says this comes from Bill Gates. This is not from Bill Gates. This is from Charles Sykes. He's got a book called The Dumbing Down of Our Kids. I'm sorry, Dumbing Down Our Kids. There we go. He's an educator, Charles Sykes, and a list of 11 rules that you don't learn about in high school or college. So again, next time you see this online and somebody says, oh, this is from Bill Gates. No, it's not. But here's the the list. Rule number one, life is not fair. Get used to it. Rule number two, the world won't care about your self-esteem. The world will expect you to accomplish something before you feel good about yourself. Rule number three, you will not make 60000 a year right out of high school. You won't be vice president with a company car until you earn both. Rule four, if you think your teacher is tough, wait till you get a boss. 
Rule five, flipping burgers is not beneath your dignity. Your grandparents had a different word for flipping burgers. They called it opportunity. Rule number six, if you mess up, it's not your parents' fault. So don't whine about your mistakes. Learn from them. Rule number seven, before you were born, your parents were as boring as they are now. They got that way from paying your bills, cleaning your clothes, and listening to you talk about how cool you think you are. So before you try to save the rainforest from the parasites of your parents' generation, try delousing the closet in your own room. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, number eight, your school may have done away with winners and losers, but life has not. That's exactly right. In some schools, they have abolished failing grades and give you as many times as you want to retake a test to get the right answer. That does not bear the slightest resemblance to anything in real no, life. life is not going to be that way. Rule number nine, life is not divided into semesters. You don't get summer off, and there are very few employers that are interested in helping you find yourself. You do that on your own time. Number 10, television is not real life. In real life, people actually have to leave the coffee shop and go get jobs. And the final one, rule number 11, be nice to nerds. Chances are you will end up working for them one day. So there you go. Again, if you've seen this online and it says it came from Bill Gates, the list is real, but it's not really from Bill Gates. It's from a book called Dumbing Down Our Kids by educator Charles Sites. I think more people should read that book. I think so, too. And, and and I think kids should think that stuff through really hard because I have a whole different perspective today than I had when I was a kid. And I wish I knew then what I know now. Then again, I'd probably make all the same dumb decisions. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening. We've got some good news on the way. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always try to wrap things up around here with some good news. And I've got some good news for you, Heidi. What's that, John? All right. Uh, Dolly Parton. I think Dolly Parton seems like an awesome person. She seems like a really I've never met Dolly Parton, but I'd like to. I think she seems really, really cool. And this is actually from May 5th, it looks like. So I have to apologize. I always say, hey, if you've got some good news to share, send it to me and I'll use it. (laughs) Well, this was... It was sent to me, but it was in my uh, Facebook, what do you call it, the Facebook page, but it was in the inbox, and I didn't see it. Oh. So I was just scrolling through there for something else, and I was like, what is this? And it was sent to me back on, it looks like May 5th, but it says, Dolly Parton pledges another $3 million to wildfire recovery. How cool is that? More than five months after wildfires ravaged portions of Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg, Dolly Parton has not stopped surprising her hometown fire victims with her generosity. And there's a video on this page where you see Dolly Parton helping uh, distribute final My People Fund checks and surprising families with $5,000 bonuses. She's like, here's an extra five grand. And I think that is so cool. And she's done very well for herself. We watched uh, the the story. I actually and how re- she... I read this online when this was happening. And was it? I thought it was awesome. Why didn't you share it with me so I could share it? Maybe I did, and you kept it in your It inbox. wasn't you. No. <laughs> Oh, you've never once shared it the right I, way. You I share say, things with you all the time. Yeah, you're like, hey, this is some good news. You should use that. I'm like, send it to me so I can use it. And then never I once. I send it to you through Messenger. No, yeah, that's the wrong way to do it. The way you do it, you send it to my personal Facebook that I never look at. So, all right. Anyway, thank you for sending that off. And if you'd like to you're read welcome. all the details. Not you. <laughs> you should go back in your corner over there. <laughs> if you'd like to send some good news, Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. That's the same place you'll find this Wonderful story that Heidi did not share with me. <laughs> All right. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. Time now for a bonus break on the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. we got a special guest joining us right now. We get to talk about a couple of different things because Cheryl is a young lady we're going to be visiting with here, Cheryl Fields. And uh, she's a financial planner, but she's got a very interesting backstory because this isn't what she did, you know, way, way back in the day. Uh, Along the way, she uh, had gone through uh, some things in her life where she said, you know what, I'm going to have a fresh start. I'm going to do something new. 
and she decided this is this is what I want to do to help people, and I think that's really, really cool. Cheryl, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, John. Thanks so much for having me on today. Well, I'm sorry to hear that you, you went through some kind of personal tragedies, some things that, that weren't necessarily a whole lot of fun, but we want to talk about that to let people know that you know if they're going through those things, that first of all, they don't need to keep going through those, and they can make a decision to do something new as well, can't they? Absolutely, John. And you know, the whole thing is sometimes the life's worst tragedies end up being your biggest blessings. And if you would have told me that that day that I was sitting on the park bench in Savannah, Georgia, um, having escaped a four-year abusive relationship after being an entrepreneur for 35 years and having a business and everything, and I joined forces with this person to sell my company internationally, and then a business relationship became a personal relationship, and then, you know, four years later, I got a call from my daughters who were grown, and they said, Mom... We, we know that you think that uh, you're hiding this from us, but we, un- we we know you're in an abusive relationship and we want you back. And I really thought, John, that I was hiding it. I did think that. Mm. And I felt like I'd made such a mistake, and I felt like I was so ashamed of myself. You know, I was like, gee, how did you let this happen to you? You were a woman who had it all by the tail, right? And uh, But it does. It happens one day at a time, and a lot of times you don't really see it coming. And um, anyone that's going through that, um, I just want to say get out while you can. And start your life over, which isn't always easy. But I escaped with nothing but my purse, and um, I had a dog, and so I had my purse and my dog. And um, and I sat on the park bench in Savannah, Georgia, where they filmed the movie Forrest Gump. Oh. And I was sitting there on the bench where Tom Hanks sat when he said, "Life's like a box of chocolates; you never know what you're going to get." And there I was. I mean, I was just like, "Wow, how did you know?" I I I had a pity party for a while. And then I said, well, but really, what are you going to do with the rest of your life now? And so I decided that I knew how business worked, but I didn't know how money worked. And so I became a financial advisor. Uh, Well, so I kind of left part out. My kids sent me, actually, a plane ticket home. And then I spent the next three or four years studying and then got my designations and then became a financial advisor. So. And that's really cool because you took this opportunity where you were saying, I'm going to make a change in my life. I'm going to do something different. You took that wonderful opportunity to say, you know, I want to help other people and I want to help these people who maybe are, you know, saving and, and trying to save for their future and have help them have a brighter future like you're having a brighter future. And I, I think it's really neat that you did that. Well, you know, thanks, John. And sometimes, you know, it's out of real desperation. You know, I mean, we want to, we all want to help people and we want to there's such a great um, a great sense of accomplishment when you can actually learn things and give back to people who need to know. And so I think that's where it's ended up. But back then, it wasn't. It was really about survival. And so um, I became a financial advisor and was hired by a global investment firm um, right as the market crashed in '08. Everybody was losing all their money. I say that's kind of a, a scary time to be starting out there, isn't it? So and all I could think of was, dang it, girl, you ended right back up on the dang park bench. You know, <laughs> I was like, how did you end up doing this again in your life? You know, what are you thinking? Get a hold of yourself. And so, uh, but then, so I went to bed several nights for a long time, actually, kind of sick at my stomach, thinking, what am I going to do now? And then all of a sudden, I just, I just kind of went to bed one night and I said, I give up. I don't know. I need new answers. And I woke up the next morning with a brand new question. Sometimes I think instead of answers, we need better questions, right? Yeah. And my question was, wait a second. Wealthy people don't do this. They don't start over every time the stock market crashes, and they don't start over every time the economy takes a dive. They always have time and money. And I was, wait a second. What do they know that I wasn't taught in financial advisor school? Hmm. That's the day that changed my life, John. Did you find the answer to that question? That's a good question. Did you find the answer to it? That is, well, that's what I speak about all across the country now. Absolutely. I've been speaking on it for about seven or eight years now. Absolutely. So so what I found out is that actually wealthy people, they um, they don't like their money to go backwards, right? So the volatility in the stock market is something that wealthy people don't necessarily, they, they don't like that. Um, they don't mind risk, but they don't want to have volatility. And so they want everything to be, you know, to know exactly what what the risks are. So what I found out, actually, is that there's ways that they've been managing their money since the IRS began in 1913. There's ways that they've been using um, you know, insurance companies, basically, but using companies to be able to have money that never goes backwards, to have tax-free income they can never outlive, to be able to have some money liquid so they can actually use it and not have it tied up um, in you know, tax-deferred accounts. And so I, I do this webinar um, 
called Your Path to Prosperity. It's a no-pitch webinar. But what we talk about is the fact that deferring taxes, John, is one of the worst ideas ever. And even on the Wall Street Journal, January 3rd of this year, Stuart Whitehouse, who was one of the early proponents of the 401k, said it's been an absolute it was never meant to be a retirement vehicle for American families. He said there's no way that you can actually really get ahead in the way that you want to do it because of the fees on Wall Street and because of the way that it's designed and structured. He even went so far to say this. We tried to kill it in the Reagan years, but the financial machine was moving so hard and so fast we couldn't stop it. So they're saying the 401k is not necessarily the way to go, and, and that's where a lot of people right now are are putting their money. They're saying, well, I, I want to save somewhere, so I'm going to put it into this 401k, and my employer is going to throw some in there for me. If I if I do it, they'll match this much. But that's not necessarily the way to go then, is it? Well, and it's because, see, and here's where I felt like the biggest aha moment came for me and all of that that I went through was the fact that I was fresh out of the financial advisor training. So I knew what we what financial advisors were taught, and they weren't being taught about this. And so that's why I that's why I really dedicated my life. But absolutely, the whole thing is, you know, we the way that it's structured, and even Tony Robbins talked about it in his book Money Mastering the Game. There's over 42 fees inside of a mutual fund. Wow! And John, that's what most people are told is is what they should do with their money. But the reality is, and I go over all the details of this if, if people wanted to know. But the fact is, it robs you of two thirds of your wealth. So the money that you could actually be using for you and your family and for the things you need now and retirement later and all that stuff, that's getting filtered off the top before you ever have a chance to get it. And here's one thing that I ask people all the time because they, you know, this is like really different. And people are like, well, how come I never heard about this? Well, let me ask you a question. From the time that I got in the market in 2008 until today, like right now, the market has tripled. Yeah. Has ever, have everybody's accounts tripled? Not necessarily. No. <laughs> Most of the people that I talk to and the people that stand up and scream and, and you know, shout their names out in my in my seminars, they say, no, wait, I'm only making like 3%, not like 100% or yeah. 200%, right? And so something's not right. And what it is is we just have, we're part of the marketing machine, the consumer, you know, um, and so we're just being told that this is this is the only way to do it and the best way that we can do it. But it's actually not. And so, anyway, so a lot is coming out about that. I mean, I'm speaking on it. Other companies and other people are, are starting to take notice of this fact. But, but we believe that you should have money that always grows for you, that's guaranteed never to go backwards. We believe it's really important to have it be tax-free. And we believe that it's really important to have it be liquid. And we use the IRS tax code to do it. So the whole thing is, with all of that, that's really opposite to everything that we're being taught and, you know, the financial services industry. You know, I just heard um, that... Just um, recently, that um, you know, Barack Obama was paid four hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a one-time speech to Wall Street. Wow. And you just think there's so much money there; they don't know what to do with it. And really, I believe like that's our money. We should have that money back, and we shouldn't let that money slip through our fingers. You know, so so that's really what I've um, dedicated my life to doing. And of course, I love to be able to do it. I speak to corporations, I speak to associations, of course, on radio and, and television, and then to groups. You know different groups so it well, is it's really stuff that we need to know john absolutely we appreciate you taking some time to visit with us about this today now uh, i uh, before we went on the air here i got your website lifestylewealthgroup.com and you were saying that if folks would like to get a free ebook there's a way they can do that through your website is that correct well yes they can do it by they can go to lifestylewealthgroup.com forward slash report um, or they can text four four two 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 and one word wealth radio and we'll send it to them that way. Um, but the cool thing about this book is it's really a place to get started. This isn't some financial mumbo-jumbo book that you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, I can't understand this. It's really an acronym for getting started on a new path and looking at new ideas. So the W in wealth it is the acronym wealth, and the W is for why, right? Why does it matter? The E is for education, or what I say, miseducation. The A is for attitude, right? How are we going to look at all this new information? The L is for leverage. That's what wealthy people do. So it's leveraging their money and making more than you're making in a bank savings account, making, you know, 4 or 5% tax-free, 6% tax-free. And then the L, uh, the L is for leverage. The um, T is for time because we want to have as much time to let our money grow. And then the H is for the how or the health. So how do we stay financially healthy? So that's what that's about, and I'd love to offer it 
give it to your listeners for free. So if they want to grab it, that's where they go. Very nice. Again, our guest today, Cheryl Fields. And if you'd like to get a copy of the free wealth report, again, her website lifestylewealthgroup.com and then if you want that report put slash report at the end of that so lifestylewealthgroup.com slash report and uh, and it's it's free and that's really nice of you for doing that Cheryl thank you very much of course well I appreciate being able to uh, speak to your listeners today and also some new ideas so thanks for having me John absolutely again our guest today we've been visiting right now with Cheryl Fields and I'm going to give you her website one more time lifestylewealthgroup.com so if you'd like to go and uh, check out uh, all kinds of fun things that she does and I think it's really cool that you're you're doing what you're doing and and what a neat thing that it just happened to be that that park bench that you were sitting on was the same park bench that we all know from Forrest Gump that's just kind of a a fun little twist that you know of all the places you could have been sitting that day where you decided I'm going to going to make some changes in my life. That's happened to be where it was. That's really kind of a cool a cool uh, little, uh, I guess, tidbit of information there. So Exactly. Yeah, no, it, it was. It was definitely a life-changing moment for me. Uh, so, yeah, they're out there for everybody. We just have to look for them, right? We just have to look for our park benches. That's all. And, and the thing is, it's never too late to change direction. So if you know you're going the wrong way, I mean, what are you waiting for to turn your life around? You don't need to keep going the wrong way just because you've always been going the wrong way. You can turn around at any time. You know, you don't have to keep going the wrong way. And if maybe you feel that uh, you're going in the wrong direction and you're looking for some some assistance, uh, if if there's something that Cheryl can do to help, uh, again, her website is lifestylewealthgroup.com, and she's offering that free report, uh, a little book called The Wealth Report, How to Live a Life of Financial Freedom, and you can find that at lifestylewealthgroup.com slash report. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show.